Well, Aloha and happy Tuesday. It is June 2nd here on the COVID Care Conversation. I'm Ryan Kalesuji, joined, of course, by Yanji Denise. Uh, we want to welcome all of you watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's great to see some of you and some of the comments already coming in. Of course, this is a conversation brought to you on the platform of the Honolulu Star Advertiser and made possible by our sponsors, the Hawaii Executive Collaborative and Hawaii Pacific Health, as we sort of navigate through this COVID-19 times together, bringing you information and connecting you with some of the leaders and stakeholders in our state and asking you their questions. Today, we have a very special guest. Normally on Tuesdays, we have uh, our um, Director of Department of Land and Industrial Relations, uh, excuse me, Scott Murakami, but today we have an even more special guest joining <laughs> us uh, from the island of Kauai. Yeah, we're very excited to welcome uh, Kauai Mayor Derek Kawakami to the conversation this morning. Kauai has had tremendous success in tamping down the virus. They haven't had a new case in, we'll get the exact date from him, but I believe it's over seven weeks now. So wonderful to see that. But of course, that comes at a great cost uh, financially to that island. And, as, and of course, we know throughout the whole state. So we're going to talk to him. Of course, the governor yesterday announcing that they will be lifting the inner island quarantine. Uh, the that will start on June 16th. So what does that look like for a community like Kauai? What are some of the concerns that they have? And joining us now is Mr. Mayor. Thank you so much for being here this morning. How are things on your island this morning? Things are great. And, um, you know, we are um, anticipating the inner island visitor starting to travel again without the 14 day mandatory quarantine. I think it's fair to say that our team um, is a little bit on edge. Uh, this is another transition, um, but we feel fairly confident in our capacity as far as testing, uh, being able to contact trace, um, screen, uh, possibly isolate if somebody does become ill, and then quarantine any close contacts that may have come with the individual. Um, so although we're a little nervous, um, we have confidence in the team that that's on Kauai. Uh, what's going to be challenging though in this next phase, it really depends on the people that live here on Kauai and their ability to build into their daily lifestyle all of the good habits that we've been repeating every single day since we started this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which is basic hygiene. That is your best first line of defense, just having a good hand washing routine, um, not touching your face and biting your nails, um, being able to social distance. If everybody's wearing a mask, um, all of these layers of protection will allow us as a society to be able to coexist with this virus. This virus is like any other virus. It's not going to just disappear. Um, a vaccine, uh, to my knowledge, has not been yet developed. Um, and if it has, it hasn't been developed to the point where it's gonna be uh, at a capacity where we're gonna be seeing any vaccine. So there's so many unknowns, but we do know this, that our economy, um, we have to strike that right balance. And so we're in a much better place today than when we were um, on March 13th when we saw our first case. But talk a little bit about the process in uh, the governor's decision, of course, to allow the 14 day quarantine. What was that discussion like with the mayors? Uh, what were some of your concerns and some of the things that were implemented in order to allow this sort of neighbor island bridge to be open once again? I think, um, as you folks may have seen, everything that has been staged up until this point has been based on risk assessment uh, to the industries and businesses that we allowed to open um, prior. Um, and up until now, it's still all relevant to health and safety. And the state of Hawaii um, has done a great job as far as being able to manage uh, the COVID-19 and its spread. Um, better so than, than other states. And so because the state of Hawaii is relatively safe, although there still is a threat, people need to realize that, that the time to be complacent and let your guard down um, is not now. In fact, it's, it's more important to be very diligent 
in keeping your guard up um, because once that inter-island mandatory quarantine drops, of course, there there is going to be uh, more confirmed cases. That is what we are assuming. And so the process has been good. Communication has been good. I would think that the one thing that Kauai and perhaps the other neighbor island mayors um, feel a little pressure on is that the federal CARES Act money, uh, which was um, dropped down to the state of Hawaii a while ago, uh, was crafted for cities with a population of 500,000 or more. And so the city and county of Honolulu has been able to get their uh, federal resource wired directly to them. And so they've had a good amount of lead time to build in the necessary infrastructure and safety measures um, for this next phase. Uh, we are still awaiting um, to receive the neighbor islands and Kauai share of the Federal CARES Act money. And that is a critical component. And like I said, um, there is a lead time in getting things uh, positioned once we get the resource. But we've had all this time to pre-plan and formulate a budget. Um, of course, it's a flexible budget because we have to be able to um, bend and swerve as as the uh, as situations change. So I would say that is probably um, the most important component at this point is that federal relief package that we're awaiting. But and it should be it should be coming down anytime. Who are you, what, what is the holdup for that and what have you not been able to do as you wait for those funds? Uh, there wasn't any holdup. I think it was just based on the process that the governor had established with the legislature. Um, it did go through um, the legislature and many of you folks may know that um, they had reconvened session to pass out a budget. Um, and then it's just awaiting the governor's uh, ability to um, appropriate the money down to the counties. But there there are some concerns at the state level, you know, because it's federal money and technically the state is the owner of this money. I think the concern is the county's ability to spend that money uh, within the param parameters and guidelines that the federal government has set. But this is not something new to the county of Kauai. Uh, we're, we, uh, we know disasters well. We know disaster response well. Uh, we recently had a number of disasters where FEMA resources were dropped down onto our island and it just requires documentation of every penny that's spent. And then we know that an audit is going to follow. And so any type of spending outside of the guidelines would be subject to reimbursement by the County of Kauai and possible penalties, which we we open we we welcome with open arms. We want to be held accountable, and we know how to spend money within the parameters. You know, one of the questions and, and maybe concerns for you is a lot of people uh, have been on their island for months, and they're looking maybe for a staycation. Uh, part of this whole idea of inter island travel is that Kamaaina economy. Uh, are you at all worried about you know people coming to your island for vacation? And and what is open right now in terms of? facilities because we know that a lot of hotels are closed, uh, some Airbnbs, you know, and some on islands are not available. So what does that look like uh, for those who are looking to maybe come to Kauai for maybe a weekend? What, what are some of the process on that? You know, that that's a hard, um, that's hard for me to predict. There's probably an economist or somebody in the travel industry that could make a better prediction, but you know, I've spent my whole life in the private sector in grocery retail, and it's it's hard to say because when it when you're dealing with a health and safety issue, whether people will travel or not, just depends on how safe they feel. So we may open up for inter island travel, but knowing that the pandemic the pandemic still exists, and people from the mainland are still flying in. I think it just depends on how many travelers during this period are willing to sort of take the risk um, to go island hopping. So that's a hard thing for me to predict as far as um, what is open and allowed to operate as far as accommodations, um, hotels and resorts. If you're a timeshare owner and, you, and you're and you owner of that timeshare, of course you're always able to, to come to stay at your own accommodation but for the most part, uh, 
it's easiest to say that the hotels and resorts are what we're targeting as far as being able to handle this first phase of reopening the visitor industry. Um, I saw a comment here uh, from Nalay Davis says, we should take into consideration how the neighbor island people feel. It's nothing short of how we feel about not wanting tourists to come back yet. Have you heard from your constituents? Is there a reluctance to open up? I know that you know you you folks have been incredibly disciplined, especially you know in in relation to the other islands. Um, you know, is there some pushback about this opening? On the other side, you know, we heard Lieutenant Governor Josh Green. He was on here last week. He said they should have opened ten days ago. So, so what are you hearing from your constituents on this? Um, it's a mixed bag. It depends who you talk to. If you're tied directly to the visitor industry and you've been unemployed and unable to get um, unemployment or whatever the situation is, but the, the more you're tied directly to the visitor industry, the more the tone and sense of urgency um, is in that type of conversation. Um, some people are absolutely uh, embracing uh, this Kauai that many folks have not seen ever, um, to be able to have our beaches back, to be able to move about without the heavy traffic. Um, but the, the bottom line is, is that there is a balance to be struck and we have to make sure we walk that fine line um, because the economic disaster is a reality. And when unemployment benefits start to run out, uh, we run the risk of seeing um, a dire situation. Um, and so it's a very tough decision um, that I think all mayors and all elected officials and all of the branch chiefs face in this type of decision making. Um, but, you know, it depends on, on whom you're talking to. It, it's really a mixed bag. Some people are very uh, fearful of the virus. And I think that we should not be living in fear. We should just be taking extra precautions. And I would like to remind people that although we're not in the stay home order phase, you're always uh, safest at home uh, with a virus or any type of seasonal virus, whether it be the flu, the cold, or in this case, a, a new coronavirus that's floating around. You know, we've heard a lot of talk and, and it's not a new conversation about diversifying Hawaii's economy and pulling away from tourism. Uh, is there anything that specifically Kauai could be looking at uh, to diversify, you know, the island economy uh, that is, mm -hmm. of course, heavily reliant on tourism? But we, you know, in the past that there have been other industries, sugarcane, of course, uh, we've seen various other industries thrive on, on neighbor islands. What would you say in terms of diversifying Kauai's economy that could be potentially be a new way to diversify that economy there? Sure. So one of the first things that we did um, at the very start, besides sort of building that protective barrier and doing the stay home order and curfews, is we deployed an economic recovery and strategy team uh, led by our Office of Economic um, Development Director, Nalani Brun, and she was able to gather um, some of the very best and brightest from the private and public sectors to start formulating uh, strategies for that type of economic recovery. And so some of the things that we've always looked at is of course high technology and having that broadband infrastructure that's ready for that 21st century jobs that can pay a living wage. And if there's any indicator on how dire and urgent um, that type of infrastructure is needed, you take a look at our unemployment system. Now, I just have to say that Scott has handled um, that crisis. Uh, I, I gotta say, um, he is someone that I would say is someone I look up to um, in being able to handle a, a crisis and being very calm, uh, cool, collected and steady. Um, but it was nobody's fault. They're dealing with it with, with a system that's antiquated. And when you take a look at Kauai's system, um, we're in the same boat. Uh, we're seeing the challenges of having people work from home. We're seeing the, the challenges of having students having to learn from home. And so really this is a time for elected officials and decision makers to make these bold decisions. You know, During a time of disaster, um, you have to look for all of the opportunities to make those paradigm shifts and we were able to do it and demonstrate it 
during the floods of 2018. That's when, you know, the people of Hyena and Wainiha and the North Shore said, we don't want to return to back to business as usual. And with that partnership with uh, state parks, they were able to redo how people were able to go and visit Ke'e Beach and that state park, which is one of the crown jewels of Kauai. No longer was it a free for all where people would just drive in whenever they wanted, park all over the neighborhood. Um, now you have to pre-plan your visit down to Ke'e. Um, you have to pay. Uh, you have to jump on uh, transportation that'll get you down there. But we've been able to put a capacity on some of those areas. And now we have to take what we learn and overlay it on the entire island. We have to work with the rental car companies to say, look, we have to come up with some sort of holding capacity where we can all coexist. Because if we have unhappy local residents that does nothing for the health of our visitor industry. So everything is about balance and being able to have an economy, but yet not have it erode away at our quality of life. The people that got to live, breathe, work, play, and struggle here um, need to have that type of assurances um, moving forward. Uh, there's a question here, and I know Hawaii's a statewide system, so we, and we've had the superintendent, but Savelle, Chevelle wants to know, um, is there a tentative plan for reopening schools? I know that the CDC for some of the younger age children has um, suggested that there's a nine to one ratio when it comes to student and teachers. Um, that's obviously not possible in Hawaii for our public school system. Um, with distance learning, you know, you mentioned the, the technical, you know, wanting broadband everywhere. Obviously, not every student can learn uh, on an iPad. They're just, you know, never mind, you know, their individual capability. They might just not be able to connect to the Internet. Um, what are you concerned about when it comes to starting school again in the fall? I think the primary concern um, at the top of everybody's mind is just keeping people safe and healthy. Now, kids need to have social interaction. That is, in my opinion, a huge part of the ed educational process. Of course, there's no one size that fits all, but you know, my wife happens to be a sixth grade middle school teacher at Kapa'a Middle, and she sees firsthand in the trenches the challenges of uh, working and teaching kids from home. Now, those CDC guidelines that came out, um, if you ever got to look at them, they are super confusing. I mean, even for me, I look at it and I'm like, I don't know how schools are going to operate uh, if they have to adhere to all of those guidelines, but those guidelines are guidelines. I know this, that the Department of Education is grinding away tirelessly to come up with a solution to make sure that uh, kids, teachers, the faculty and staff can be safe and that they can return to as much normal as possible. Um, I don't know if they have that concrete plan yet, um, but I do know that they're working on it. I've heard conceptual ideas being thrown around, um, but I wouldn't want to overstep my bounds. But just know this, although education is a state function, it takes a village to raise a child. And so like anything else, the Department of Education can count on the County of Kauai to assist them in any way possible to help them achieve their goal of getting kids back to the classroom. So we always are um, nearby as a resource and we always have resources to help walk them through or to help um, get their teachers and kids uh, back to school in a, face, in a safe manner. Umer, we know that you are a busy man and that you actually have somewhere else to go after this. So we, uh, we want to let you go and we want to thank you for your time. Is there any final oh, thoughts you. that you have uh, before you head out and uh, uh, any last words? Well, I'd just like to thank you folks for giving me this opportunity and for anybody else that's taking the time to listen in. I want to thank you for your time. You know, my parents would always say it is a very precious gift because you're giving me a part of your life that you're never going to get back. And so for the folks that are taking the time, uh, thank you very much. I feel honored. And I just like to urge people that although the state of Hawaii is safe, um, we need for folks to take the necessary precautions. You know, government has done everything that we can to point that compass and set the course. But in this next phase, 
if, if our people cannot be disciplined enough to take the necessary precautions, not only do they put themselves at risk, and if they're healthy and they can handle the, the COVID-19 symptoms, that's fine and dandy, but by the nature of this virus, you could be spreading it to people, innocent people, who may not have the immune system that you may have. And so we just have to be courteous of each other and just live aloha, which is already ingrained in our DNA. So thank you. Thank All right, you Mayor, so much. Mayor Kalkomi, thank you so much. Uh, we thank hope you. to talk to you soon down the line in the future. Uh, until then, thanks. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Very interesting to hear his reaction to the governor's announcement yesterday about opening up. I think that he's right. You know, there's such a balance there. Kauai has worked so hard to have the numbers that they've had. And, you know, there's a threat now that, I mean, he did say that he does expect there to be new cases. And so how do they handle that and how do they protect themselves? Um, you know, he's obviously very measured in his response and, and pretty conservative in what he's willing to allow. Yeah, and you, you kind of heard that hesitation uh, that, you know, they have to be ready. There, there is some uh, hesitation about opening up. Of course, Kauai has been an example, uh, you know, for many of the other islands of how to sort of get this in check and how they've done a great job in keeping their numbers low for as long as they've been able to sustain that. And, now, you know, now they're opening up their, their shores, basically, to the other neighbor islands. And so they are prepared. Uh, also interesting to kind of just hear his overall thoughts about how to sort of balance, uh, you know, the the influx of tourism that we've seen over the years and the numbers that they've increased to and what they've done on Kauai to sort of manage that and require uh, appointments and reservations for things like that and potentially looking at that at other areas within their communities uh, to be able to enforce that in, in not just some of these parks, but beaches as well. So, uh, you know, he, he always says Kauai is not immune to some of these disasters. They know how to handle those disasters because of their histories. And so I think a lot of lessons can be learned from the Garden Isle. Absolutely. And, you know, there's this real push now to go back. Everybody wants to go back to what, what was before. But there are other voices who say maybe we shouldn't go back full throttle in the same way. This is an opportunity to do some resetting. And that's really what he was talking about there. Uh, there were some questions that came in about the logistics. And we invite you to check out the paper because of, of how the inner island opening is going to work. There are two great articles. One is just talking about the governor's announcement. Uh, the other one is focusing on Hawaiian Airlines and their virus stopping policies. So they, you know, the airline gave a glimpse, they walked through and showed um, how people are going to be sitting. You can see here, they're spread out. There's almost no one in any, there's no one actually I can see in, the, in those middle rows. Um, they will be, some passengers can be scanned. Uh, they're not going to be seated by frequent flyer status for impl imp example, but on order of the plane. So there's a lot of steps Hawaiian Airlines is taking. So we invite you to check out the paper. They got a great write through about what the flight itself is going to look like if you decide to visit Kauai or any other neighbor island. That's right. And we're going to be actually speaking to Peter Ingram from Hawaiian Airlines here on Friday. So we encourage all of you to tune in then. Uh, ask your questions about some of the efforts that Hawaiian Airlines is taking and some of the new procedures. I think a lot of us who fly, fly frequently, especially to the neighbor islands, have gotten sort of used to the old ways and the ways that we're used to uh, showing up to the gate, you know, maybe in some areas 10 minutes before, if you live on some of those neighbor islands where it's not as busy, but things are going to be different. And so want to get an update from Hawaiian Airlines. And again, we'll be talking to him on Friday. Another stark headline in the paper today uh, talks about the future of Hawaii's economy and uh, potential that people will be leaving the state. A University of Hawaii economy, economic researchers are predicting that an out-of-state migration of 25,000 people or more from Hawaii in 2022, uh, those people will find work on the mainland as the state sort of struggles to sort of overcome this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, a lot of them, they believe the people going out will be the result of those unemployment people, uh, those who have sort of made a living off the hospitality industry if it is not able to rebound. So. Uh, some stark numbers that, you know, in, in this time where we are completing the census, and we, again, we encourage everybody to do their part and, and take the census, but uh, those are some pretty significant numbers that we're seeing of a potential uh, depletion of the migrate, uh, you know, people migrating out of the state. 25,000 people potentially uh, is what this report is saying. Yeah, a pretty sobering, um, pretty sobering statistic there. There's a great article, as Ryan said, about the economist predictions there. And another good reminder from Ryan about filling out the census forms. Please do that, uh, 2020census.gov. 
Uh, go ahead if you haven't done that already and fill that out. Hawaii more than ever needs to be counted. Federal dollars are count are you know given out based on the population. So we want everyone here to be counted. Uh, please, residents, go to 2020census.gov and fill that out or fill the sheet that was mailed to you. That information is confidential, it is safe, and it is vital that Hawaii fills out all those forms. Uh, we don't want to end on a bad note. We always like to end on a high note. Uh, there's a local business that has been doing so much good for Hawaii. Uh, for over a century, City Mill has been serving Hawaii communities, and they have done an amazing job with their spare change campaign. They asked shoppers to donate their change when making a purchase at any of the locations. 100% of those proceeds went to the Hawaii Food Bank. Through that campaign, all those uh, nickels and dimes added up to over $40,000 during the month-long campaign. We've seen also um, different City Mill employees helping out at some of these food distributions. So we really appreciate all that they've been doing um, to really help our community. That's right. And not only that, but they have also provided some much needed help to those Girl Scout cookies by offering cookie buyout uh, booths and, and programs where in shoppers where they can buy, you know, Girl Scout cookies. Of course, those are always uh, something a lot of people look forward to. So they've sort of helped out the Girl Scout cookies uh, and those sales because we know a lot of people who normally would just go to the market and pick up those cookies or, or have that interaction with the Girl Scouts themselves you know, a lot of that got canceled. And so uh, City Mill also stepping up there. So we want to mahalo them uh, for just their efforts in the community. Uh, another great example of a local business doing their part to help our community during this time. Again, fill out the census. If you are in need of food, go to hawaiifoodbank.org. There's a lot of food distributions, I believe, over 200 throughout the state, different points where you can get a bag of groceries or get whatever you need. So um, definitely raise your hand if you're someone who needs that. If you've got a Hawaii hero, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Tomorrow, we've got a doctor from Hawaii Pacific Health that is going to be joining us. And then on Thursday, we're going to be hearing from Mufi Hanneman, who is the president and CEO of the Hawaii Tourism and Lodging Association. You know, Ryan, you were asking about where on Kauai can people stay. There's a real question, you know, as these neighbor islands start to open up, will there be hotel beds that are open? Um, because so many of the hotels have shut down. And then, as you said, Peter Ingram joining us on Friday. And again, we want to thank uh, everybody for your comments. We know that a lot of people are asking and already uh, just one just kept coming in from, um, you know, a, a question coming in about Scott Murakami and when he will be back. Uh, we are going to try to get Scott Murakami back on, at some point this month. We know that he is a very popular guest and we are used to seeing him here on Tuesdays. And he's been so gracious of his time for the past two and a half months of joining us every Tuesday. But as you can imagine, there's a lot happening there. Uh, and so we are going to try to get him back as soon as we can. And we will make sure to let you know he is definitely someone we want to continue to have that conversation with. And uh, we encourage the, those of you who may still have some of those questions about unemployment to visit some of our past episodes. Some of the questions that, again, I saw coming in were directly addressed by Scott Murakami in previous weeks. So please head back to uh, uh, our uh, past episodes and watch those uh, episodes again to get some of that information uh, because we know that a lot of people are still waiting in line to sort of get that uh, in unemployment benefits as they chip away on some of the backlog there. Yeah, the paper actually in their co coronavirus coverage section has a whole uh, section dedicated to, uh, you know, archiving every single broadcast that we've done. So you can just go over to the paper's website and it's very easy because you can actually scroll through. You can scrub past the headlines and just watch, you know, the interview with Scott or the interview with the governor or whomever else you want to hear from again. Um, so that's a really easy way rather than toggling all through Facebook. That's right. All right, until tomorrow, we want to thank again all of you for tuning in and again to our sponsors, the Hawaii Executive Collaborative and Hawaii Pacific Health for making this conversation possible. Uh, we know again that this is a very challenging time here in our state and in our country really. And so we just encourage all of you to just show a little aloha up there uh, and, and really do your part to help where you can. But until then, uh, until tomorrow, we will see you right back here on the COVID Care Conversation. Aloha. Aloha.